poison ivy. That's not good. Good evening. I'd like to call uh, tonight's East Hemphill Township Traffic Commission meeting <clears throat> to order. Uh, would you please uh, rise and join me in a moment of silence followed by the Pledge of Allegiance? And now the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Our first action item is the minutes from March 15th, uh, 2023. Any comments on the minutes, Ian? None. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from March 15th, uh, 2023? So moved. Motion by Mr. Weaver, second from the chair. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries two to zero. Uh, we did have a traffic report, uh, reviewed it. There's nothing, uh, you know, out of the ordinary there. Did you, were you good with it? Yep. See, we and, got the uh, truck route project still in the works and, yeah. Okay. Moving forward and I'm sorry. Yeah, I just commented that the truck route project that we've been working on is, is still in the works, but it is moving forward. And um, I have no other comments on the traffic report. Staff, anything you, anybody wanted to highlight on the traffic report? It seemed pretty mundane and routine. Yep. Chief? Nothing to comment on. Okay. Um, Old business, Spring Valley Road, uh, the speeding issue. Mr. Lefevre couldn't be here tonight. Um, he did send the board uh, an email with his thoughts on um, Spring Valley Road um, and putting up speed bumps. And this has kind of been a back and forth issue uh, for those that are here. If you haven't followed it, uh, at one time we put up uh, temporary speed bumps on Spring Valley Road. Um, uh, to evaluate what effect they would have. Um, once th that did happen, uh, it did reduce speed, but it also, the neighbors, a lot of neighbors along Spring Valley Road came, complained about um, the placement of the speed bumps, the fact that it was um, an inconvenience for them, and it was also directing traffic into a neighboring community, uh, increasing their traffic and creating an issue. So we removed them. We did some other um, traffic um, mitigation measures. We uh, narrowed the lanes a little bit uh, with the striping. We also put in um, or rotated into the uh, mix a uh, radar speed sign, which gives drivers their speed as they're going past as well. We reevaluated it. And at this point, I don't, I. I'd continue like to, would continue, for me, I would like to continue to um, enforce aggressively that road, um, but I don't, I don't see the need for speed bumps there right now. Um, I'd like to hear from, I guess, staff, you know, where you guys are at on this. If you want to, sure. Um, we actually just recently finished this traffic, another speed study that had been requested and got the results of that today. And it's consistent with um, multiple speed studies that were done last year before and after the some of the traffic calming that was put into play. Um, at this point, the it's a 25 mile an hour zone. The majority of the speeds um, are speeds that we would expect in a 25 mile an hour zone, uh, ranging between within compliance and 10, 10, 12 miles an hour over the speed limit. Um, at this point, I would concur that enforcement and education on our behalf uh, should be continued and that the speed bumps also posed uh, negative effects and consequences when they were placed out there. So. Perry, did you wanna provide any comment from the public works perspective? 
Uh, well, uh, we did. Uh, can you hear me? Yep, you're good. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm in my car. Um, uh, we did have complaints when the speed bumps were there that uh, they were causing issues with people cutting through the other developments. So, yeah, I think they have a negative effect on the whole surrounding area. But um, I, we're, we are watching it to make sure that the speed signs are working. And at this point, I think that's about all we can do. Okay. So my question, I guess, is it is a 25 mile per hour speed limit. And why is that? Why can't, what if, I mean, it's kind of like a backward solution. What if we just made it 35 miles per hour? I'm just throwing that out there. But if that's what people are doing, why would you make it 25 in the first place? I'm not disagreeing. I'm just curious. Is there a reason for that? I'm not, I'm not sure. And I don't think in the historical dump that we had anything about what the reason was for establishing the speed limit. And I'm, I know for certain it goes back before my time on the board. I'm not sure about your time on the planning commission, if you have yeah, any I recollection. Been that to me. The only thing I can think of is it, um, there, there are some sharp curves and um, some hills and some site issues, I think, on that road that may warrant a 25 mile an hour zone. Um, I think the main issue is when you get to the top of the hill and you start the incline down, I think I, I think most people honestly aren't paying attention and you know their speed creeps up and, that, and that's where the issue is. I don't think it's you know intentional aggressive driving and um, that sort of thing. So I do think education will, over time, our visibility and education will have uh, the effect that we want on this. In addition, you know, I'm hopeful that local police um, will be able to have use of radar here coming up. Hmm. Fingers crossed on that. Um, and hopefully we can be one of the first ones to invest in that um, uh, tool for law enforcement. I think that will have a positive effect on it as well um, on this road and some others. So I just think for me, I think putting in the in the speed bumps is going to create another issue for us uh, to deal with with the neighborhood, you know, below, um, you know, at the bottom of that hill that we've had to deal with before. And I, I just don't think that with what we've got, what we've accomplished so far, I don't think we need them. Yeah, I could go either way, I think. Um... You know, if it is 25 mile per hour, I feel that that should be the limit. Um, I think um, I think that permanent pumps would be better than the temporary ones. I think the temporary ones just invite bad behavior, which people know that they're temporary, that if they make enough of a ruckus that maybe they'll be removed. Whereas I think permanent pumps that may be a little more gentle would be more uh, better received possibly. And they have worked other places. I mean, I keep thinking of Kaufman Road, they work fine there. People don't seem to be upset by them. But if that is then driving traffic to other neighborhoods, then we're just moving the problem somewhere else. So it's, it's a tough one. I mean, like I said, I could go either way, I think. Mr. Lefevre seems to be in favor of them. And so maybe it's something, have we brought this to the whole board? Or I think the first time we put the temporary humps was just the traffic commission, just the three of us. I don't remember if we ever brought it to the whole board for a discussion. I don't think so. And I, I think really this thought. is where it's appropriate that we okay. make the decision on it. Um, and I'm with you on that. I do think Kaufman Road, you have a heavy, heavily pedestrian utilized um, situation there where you have, um, you know, teenagers crossing parking lots. There is definitely, I think, a need there uh, with young drivers. And I agree with you, they do work. There's no, no doubt about it. They slow people down. Um, well, I think one of those humps is an actual crosswalk as well. So, um, there, I, I, I do think it's a little different situation. We don't want to be encouraging 
pedestrian walking on Spring Valley Road. Um, that's not a road that was designed and can handle pedestrian traffic uh, in, the, in the places that we're speaking of. When you get down towards Forestown Road, that's a different story, but up where we're talking about, it's definitely not um, a pedestrian friendly roadway. And it's again, true. So I guess my thoughts would be possibly make it 35 miles per hour where that, you know, where that's feasible, except at the sharp, there's the double west turn. And, you know, maybe that should be 25 and the rest should be 35. That's one idea or one thought or it'll be good. I mean, I know people live on that road and you want to walk your dog or something. You, you have to get out. You have to be on the road some to some extent. If there be any way to put on one side of the road, even some kind of a path, I don't know if that's workable. Um, it does seem that I would... I would tend to not want to see the speed bumps. Um, so maybe those are the two possibilities. Make it 35 if wherever we can. Possibly a place for people to get off the road that they can walk. Other than that, I, I mean, we've been really trying with this. And there don't seem to be any good solutions other than police presence to just get the word out that if you speed on there, you might get caught or stopped. So I do think it, it warrants enough to have the police presence there and the education there. And I, for me, that's where I think we're at. I don't, I think if we open up, I mean, I think you remember the last time that, you know, the residents came out in force about the speed bumps. I think if you start the conversation about changing the speed limit, increasing it, lowering it, what have you, you're going to have the same effect. You're going to have a group of people coming out that are going to be against in a group of people that are going to be for it and it's it's going to be um you're not going to make anybody happy in that situation so i do think we've done a good job we've started the education process i think we should continue with it um and i think it's like some of the other areas that we've had in the township you know sometimes people come in and they complain about speeding and we do the investigation there really is no speeding in this case, we found that there was, we took some measures. I think we've had a fair amount of success in, in lowering the speed there. And I think we should continue at it um, at this point. I, I just don't think we need to go down the direction of the speed bumps, but. Okay. Yeah, I will agree with that. Okay. I we need a motion or it's just. I don't think we point. Yeah. it's just been an item that's continued to be on the agenda and we were just looking for some closure to be able to to move it off knowing that if we have I mean, complaints that come back again or something else that comes up we can always put it back on but it's been it's been perpetuating on the old business so I said I'm a little bit on the fence if Mr. Lefevre feature meeting has a great reason that we should have them I might flip-flop <laughs> okay I hate to say that but uh, you know, you got to be open to new information, I think, too, and that may down the road be the uh, possible solution, but I think for now, I agree with Mr. Wigglesworth that we should just not do that at this point. Is there anybody from the audience or Zoom who wants to speak on this topic, specifically Spring Valley Road? Anybody from Zoom? Okay. Hearing none, uh, we have the truck route study. Um, the engineer has indicated that we would have a draft by the end of the month. Is that still the case? Yes, but we may not actually have the draft because if you remember, the draft is supposed to go to West Hemfield first okay. and then come to us, but it's continuing on their schedule. It's just a matter of getting it completed and correct and then pushed out. So okay, she's so, staying on it. She and Chris are in pretty regular communication on it. All right, so that's something that we should have shortly. Um, for those of you that are here in the audience, uh, we were contacted, I think this got started by um, some residents on Centerville Road wanting truck enforcement um, be, uh, because trucks were using Centerville Road as a cut through and not for delivery. 
And um, when we looked into it, we discovered that the signs are not pos um, excuse me, properly posted for enforcement on um, prohibiting trucks. Uh, and to do so, uh, we needed to do an official study. Um, we also decided to take a comprehensive look at things with West Hempfield because we do have an issue uh, with north south truck traffic. How do we get trucks north and south in the township? We have good routes east and west, but how do we do it north and south? So um, that's what that study is, is referring to. D is there anybody here from the audience who has a comment on the truck study? Okay, hearing none. Um, new business, does anyone up here have any new business? Nothing, okay. Public comment. Anybody here for public comment? Dawn Slay Hardy, um, Stony Battery Road. <clears throat> I want to thank the chief and her crew that <clears throat> have been out there working and trying to slow these people down. Uh, right now they're working on the road paving it so that helps a little bit except for you know they're supposed to be going slow and they're I swear they're going 60 if they're doing an inch but um, anyways and then trying to talk to the west about it and she's sympathetic but they don't sound like they're I don't know have you had an opportunity to speak with her? I have not, but I uh, certainly can reach out to her. Yeah, because they, I mean, I mean, I was there. I saw the numbers. Right. I know those people were doing 60 miles an hour in a 35 mile an hour zone. So don't raise your 25, because if you go to 35, they're going to be doing 60, I promise. <laughs> That's how it goes. So, but thank you for your efforts. You bet. Anyone else? <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm Jeff Boyd. I live on uh, 340 Barber Street, and um, we contacted Cindy. Yes, um, about a, actually the, the speed bump situation here, but speed table, or you want to call it, whatever. Um, we have pretty much a couple of residents here, and more that we're going to come, but I don't think we need them yet um, on the speeding. It's in the old section of, of Barber Street off of um, Stanley, Can not in the new. Pull up about so we know what we're talking about. So that that section there in the old neighborhood that we live in, that they, it's, since it's, it's a major cut through because of the new neighborhood there, there's 85 houses that are actually put back in that new neighborhood there. So there's a lot of cut through. Okay. As, I'm not sure what this, there's no speed limit signs there, but is it a 25 mile an hour speed limit there in a residential? If there's no speed limit, Chief, what is it? 25? 25 in a residential. Okay. So I know that they speed, but you know, I mean, you know, I, the same with everybody else here. I, I have at least 15 people easy that, you know, the speeding situation is bad, especially during school, you know, the kids and everything. But Okay. So, yeah, you know, from, from Stanley, like right there. Pretty much stop sign there, Barbara. They put a stop sign to make there, Barbara. Can we zoom in just a little? In the Barbara, are we talking yeah, about? Yeah, that section where the trees are along it. Slide it down a little bit. In there. Mm -hmm. Oh, the other. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Oh, right there. Yeah, there you go. So it'd be from Stanley Avenue. Straight down there. To... There we go. Our internet's really slow tonight, so it's just yeah. everything's taking longer than. So I think it's where it's tree line there. Is that? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. From Stanley, pretty much to, to the new neighborhood. Okay. So that, that's not, that's only probably what a football field length, maybe two football field lengths. You know, it's, mm -hmm. but, you know, the speed, um, we actually, um, 
don't, you know, we don't know exactly, but we know it's a, they're going over 25. And I've, I've been there how many years? Since 95, and they've been there a lot longer. And it, it, it used to be just a horseshoe, so there was not a lot of traffic. And then they put them houses in there about okay. 10 years ago. So, so we were um, just wanting to know what we can do about that if we can get a study done. I know Cindy that, we, that Chris talked to mm -hmm. said that, you know, we, we would bring it up, and then I guess we got it then. I'm not sure what the next process would be. Correct. So uh, whoever Chris was, I do have a note from Cindy that said um, that she had heard from Chris yeah. and that you guys were going to come tonight and explain what your concerns were. And then we do have a process mm -hmm. to add it to the list for a speed study to look at what's actually occurring. And then we would move forward from there after that's done. That, that location was forwarded to me and it is on our list. Um, with the weather turning, we're starting to to do our, our speed study. So I would say we're probably looking at May-ish uh, based on the priority of some other roadways that we need to, that have kind of been in our queue here. Um, I did put out an email to our patrol guys with the time frame that was specified primarily before and after okay. school hours for us to, to keep an eye on it. Um, one thing I wanted to ask all of you, we have a, a large speed trailer that we can put out with messages. Um, usually we like to ask for permission from somebody before we put it in their yards. Um, so if actually our property is right pretty much right in the middle, you know, where in the middle there. And you're at 340? Yeah. And would you be okay if we put a, a trailer in your yard for five or six days? Yeah, that'd be fine. Yeah. Okay. All right, very good. Yeah. Okay. That's that would be it then. So the process is just so you're familiar, what'll happen is it'll go into the queue. We'll, we'll get a study of you know how many vehicles, what the average speed is that that kind of thing and then it'll come back to us and, and we'll take a look at it and discuss again what we had and again sometimes we the results come back and they um you know verify you know what what we've heard but the majority of the time i would say they come back and people might be speeding but it might be 30 miles an hour and yeah. when you're standing next you know in the street and somebody's going 30 miles per hour compared to 25 miles an hour it feels like a big oh, yeah. difference yeah. Um, so just keep that in mind. So our hands are tied somewhat with what we get back. So, but we will take a look at it. Um, we will give you the results of what we find. Um, and the, uh, and chief, like she said, if, if you're open to, to putting a the trailer there, we definitely will. Okay. So do you, do you think it's school kids or just well, I mean, residents? It's, or? it's, um, school kids, you know, that time zone, but then um, it, it, it it's pretty much all day. But during the evening hours, when everybody's home, you're you're talking about eighty five new homes, and and it's a major cut through. Which you know, I, I mean, I cut through neighborhoods too. So they come off of you know the um, Park City section and come down to they'll come up Stanley and make a left on the Barbara and then go into instead of going in, in you know Church and then right, and then a right on Kaufman. Or, right. Yeah, they they'll do that. You know. Yeah, which is fine. Then they go in there to you know have eighty five new homes. You're talking, you know, an average of three people per home. That's a lot of people. Yeah, you know, in a hurry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I you know I'll cut through that if I come up from Stony Valley Road. I'll cut mm -hmm. off and then you know come in. So, but um, what's up? Mm -hmm. uh, but the people that live in people also live in that other neighborhood, you know, too. So I, mean, I cut through their neighborhood too. But right. You know, just to, but that, you know, so that'd be it. We'll see what, see what happens there. Okay. Do you, I mean, one other question. I mean, I know you said like the, the, the new homes are using it and stuff. Is it that you feel there's cut through traffic coming through there? Oh yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's cut through traffic. I've seen people cut through there. Um, let them continue um, cut through and then get on a Kaufman and then shoot mm -hmm. over to the West Hamfield, you know, over some by road into the West Hamfield section there, you know, Westfield drive and all that stuff. So I think that's what Mr. Weaver was getting at when he said, do you think it's kids, you know, coming from the school? Are they cutting through from Stanley to cut down or no? Okay. I mean, not really. You know, it's, I mean, heck, I mean, the school buses, I mean, we got a couple school buses up there to fly up. Surprising enough, you know. So it might help if we can get one in May when school's in session and then maybe one in over the summer when it's not, just to see if there's any difference that shows up. Russ, anything else? Sure. You have to come we to need microphone. you to come up. So just real quick, we um, have a 
somebody that takes minutes from the recording, if you could just give us your name and address. Thank you. At one time, Barbara Street was just a horseshit. Yeah. Now, towards Stanley Avenue, there was a, a dip in the road. It was for drainage. And that slowed everybody down. We never had any problems. Well, since then, nicely, they redid the road, and it's smooth now. There's no dip. And they also opened up an 85 home development that connects to Barber Street, which connects to Hoffman Road, which is right beside the school. So there's school traffic coming in and out. There's school buses, two, I think, each morning and afternoon uh, down Barber Street. Now there's Amazon, FedEx, UPS, zipping through our street to get to the new development and vice versa. It's just a completely different situation. Also, at one time, it was a bunch of old farts like me. Now there's some younger families in the street. There's people out pushing strollers. There's grandkids. There's kids playing in the yard. I don't want to sound like one of these old guys that tells you to get off his yard, but it's a concern. And the streets only, even when they redid, I think it's 22 feet, maybe 24 tops. Uh, and there's a lot of walking traffic, dog walkers. It's not a very good street for people, even in that short community yards, whatever it is, they can zip up to at least 40 miles an hour from one end. There's a stop sign at the other and they still manage to get that. Especially the, the UPS and the FedEx, you know how busy they are at UMass Pico. So it's just a completely different situation and we would appreciate looking at it and see if there's something to be done. Maybe not a speed bump, Maybe a, a temporary speed bump during the warmer months. I don't know if speed bumps are a problem with piling snow, if that's one reason you're averting them. That they could be removed in the winter when there's less foot traffic, but just try to consider all the options. Quieter and table. Oh. That's a table. So that that one's a speed table. That's there's actually a crosswalk in it, within it. No, I think the other one up is that a speed hump or is that a table as well? It may be a hump that we don't determine what we can put in there. We would have the traffic engineer look at the street and look at all the geometrics, and they would tell us what we could or couldn't legally and and appropriately place in there. No. So that'll all come after Jen and the, I'm sorry, Chief and the police department are able to do their studies okay. before school gets out and then probably another one after that, just to confirm. Just one question. You guys are so concerned about, they actually bought their own temporary speed bumps, put them out one day and somebody came by and got hit. What's the answer there? Yeah, don't, 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 don't do don't, that. Don't do that. Not, <laughs> definitely slowed things down <laughs> one day. Okay. So it's under consideration. Well, thank you. Um, we will look into it. Uh, and again, we will take it serious. Uh, we'll let you know what we find with what the speeds are and stuff. So, so to be continued um, yeah. on this. Is there anything else? Anybody on Zoom? There's no one on Zoom. Okay. All right. So for the good of the order, one more time, everybody good with what they wanted to speak about? Okay, so we're going to adjourn the uh, traffic commission meeting. It is 629 p.m. Uh, we will reconvene at 7 p.m. for the Board of Supervisors meeting. Thank you. Oh, is that? Are we doing anything with that?